Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah uh, Sheikh Omar Qureshi, um, one of the you know, they say sometimes you ask permission and sometimes you apologize. So this is one of those apology moments. Um, we just read that Muhammadin rana. By Allah, repeat the mention of the qualities of our beloved Prophet Muhammad so that you may remove from the heart its rust. So we just wanted to ask Sheikh Omar Qureshi that what is one aspect of the description of the Prophet Sallallahu that is most dear to him? What's something about the description of the Prophet Sallallahu that resonates most with you? Subhanallah, um, in, I think in our times, the um, one thing that the Sunnah means, especially for us uh, in our times, is, it's, it's in the verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al-Ahzab, he says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanan. Um, this uswa of the Prophet Sallallahu him being a uswa is a quality of, that he possesses Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but it's a quality and him being an uswa this is something that's divinely appointed it's something that is uh, selected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala if someone does not have the Prophet Sallallahu basically they have no uswa they have no point of reference in their life. They have no center to give them any type of meaning to what they're being, uh, what they're living through, and their entire life. And this is a big nama from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And this, the Prophet Sallallahu being an uswa, in our time should not be donned, uh, should not be lost upon us. The reason, particularly in our times, is because. The, you know, living in secular societies, there is no, the society itself, its culture, its uh, architecture, its laws, its, uh, the whole culture of a secular society is that without any type of uswa, which means is without any type of reference. So no one knows what it means anymore to be a human being. That's really what it comes down to. And this creates all sorts of psychosis, different types of cognitive dissonance that people live in. They live in compartmentalized lives. They don't know how everything comes together and everything makes sense. Why? Because that point of reference, that uswa is gone. And so they're all, you know, every time, every day, every week, people are trying to figure out what to be or who to be. And this changes over time. I don't mean over time, meaning over hundreds of years. I'm meaning for a lot of people, many people, it means changing weekly, sometimes daily, who they are, what they're supposed to be. And basically, if that's the case, then that's really what the type of uh, individual a secular society would want, uh, aims to produce, which is that you're basically recreating yourself all the time. And you have no point, you, there's no way you can determine if you're progressing anymore. Why? Because there's no point of reference. To me, to progress means you're progressing from a certain point. And that point has to be stable. That point has to be the same. Otherwise, if that point is always changing, right, there's no stability, then you're, you never know if you're making progress or not. Hence the importance of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hence the importance and how big of a ni'mah. You know, there's a saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> you know, we're living in a place where, yes, you know, for people who don't have the Prophet, you know, 
when you find this religion, you find this deen, and then you encounter the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, this religion is where you encounter Allah as Allah is, because it's His words in the Quran. It's His words. It's not my words. It's not the words of the Prophet sallallahu companions. It's not even the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you encounter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is, and you also encounter the perfect human. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he is. And hence, to celebrate this and to be thankful for this, that we have a point of reference, we know what it means to be a human being. We know what it means. We know how we should live. Um, that point is not dawned upon us. And inshallah, we should be thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for giving us this blessing. Because uh, I'm sure all of us know individuals, inshallah, all of us are not going through this, but we know of individuals who, even if they're Muslim, they live secular lives. Um, let alone being secular, without a religion, that when you don't have you don't have a relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your life is uh, compartmentalized. You don't know how to make sense of your experiences. You don't know where you should go. You don't know how you should act. You don't know what the proper adab is. And hence, you know, it leads to a lot of uh, problems. And we know individuals going through this. Hence the importance of, you know, one of the things that one of our sheikhs has always told us, you know, when teaching the deen, is to teach it through the seerah. Teach the deen, not even through books of fiqh. That's not how you do da'wah, right? You don't do da'wah through books of aqidah. You don't do da'wah through books of logic. You know, they're very dry books, you know, especially logic books. It's, they don't, they're not really motivating. <laughs> um, but who, how, you know, what is the best way to teach people about the deen? Is to teach it through the seer of the Prophet Why? Because you're putting them direct in direct contact with the best of creation, with the complete human being. And this is very important. And I, I was just profound at the, the advice that he gave. Allah protect him. Sheikh Samar Nas, you know, he's someone who, you know, anybody who knows him knows how much he loves the Prophet uh, It's incredible. And uh, just by being around someone like Sheikh Samar, you can't help but not love the Prophet so if anybody's been around him they know and so this way of uh, of, of introducing uh, you know of, of, of giving a giving someone this blessing of understanding and knowing who the complete and perfect human being is is an important point of reference for us that we should not lose inshallah and hence the importance of studying hadith studying the words being directly in contact with the words of the Prophet ﷺ. It's part of our lives, right? It's incredibly important, and it has such an impact on us spiritually. And so reading books like Riyadh al-Salihin, it just takes on such more, the, the meaning that it takes on so much profound that you're reading. The, this is, these are the actual words of the Prophet of Allah ﷺ. And to be in direct contact with that, the, the impact that has on forming your mind, your heart, and, and, and even physically, um, it's hard to even express that in words. It's just someone has to really experience that. And so, yeah, when we, we think about the Prophet Sallallahu being an Uswa, and this is something divinely appointed. Any other human being, Allah Subhanahu Wa could have chosen to be an Uswa, but no, he announced, Allah Subhanahu Wa announced in his Quran eternally, that the uswa for all of us is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you know, for, they say, Hani'un lakum, right? So, you know, that's a, it's a big blessing to have that. And um, Allah give us that, and may Allah, you know, make us be true mirrors to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and reflecting him in as, as much as we can in our lives and, um, and, and living fulfilled lives, not lives of psychosis, of dissonance, of fragmentation, and um, where we don't understand, uh, we can't make sense of what we're supposed to do. I mean, I've seen people, unfortunately, um, just not able to, uh, you know, I mean, just talk about somebody being dehumanized, just take away their point of reference in their lives. And then they're just wandering and wandering and wandering and not knowing where to go. That's really, um, I consider that it's a psychological adab. It's, 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 and no doubt people brought it on to themselves, right? I mean, the, the re we reached this point not accidentally. Don't ever think that. There's, people make conscious choices to live 
in the type of culture that we're in, and, and they fight for it. Lord knows they fight for it. France is a good example of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If, I don't know if I should have said that or not, but inshallah, French people excuse us, you know. Um, that's why I think editing is a good thing, right? <laughs> But, you know, people will fight for this type of culture, not realizing, you know, the type of adab it's, that they're living in themselves. Um, and so, you know, this is something that, you know, ask Allah SWT to protect us and to, and to continue to give us the blessings uh, of knowing al uh, insan al-Kamal, which is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to give us a tawfiq to embody um, all of his qualities, who he was. So it's not a specific quality, sorry, Sheikh Faraz, I had spoke about, but it's, Perhaps it is a quality, him being an uswa, the uswaiyatu, or uh, what the master is of this, the people of Sarf can tell me, you know, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hopefully that answered the question, inshallah. <laughs> Shouldn't the Riyadh Salihin and, you know, for those books and others have, there's a now a very nice three volume edition of Riyadh Salihin with a very good commentary. Um, first time I saw it, I was a bit scared because it had the brown cover and the gold writing that has been the means of many tormented translation experiences, PTXs, uh, tormented translation experiences. But this it's really good. And of course, the publishing house also makes you wonder. It's called Muslims at Work or something like that. But it's a three-volume translation of Riyadh al-Salihin. It's available through Firdos. It's beautiful because it's a translation. It's got the Arabic text. It also has very good commentary from the great classical commentaries. And that's something every family should strive to have. That, also a book that Sheikh Omar Qureshi loved, has taught uh, before. Um, he used to teach it online. Um, Kitab al-Adhkar, the book of remembrance. And that too is available in a good translation. That You, know, you have... Over a thousand of the du'as and adhkar of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and these are things that should be in our library, which should we have, we have, you know, a living relationship with. Because um, when you read a book, yeah, you are with the author of the book. When I was in Damascus, I f found myself having some extra time, so I asked one of my teachers that I have extra time. You've emphasized good company. Whose company should I keep? And he said, Imam al-Ghazali and al-Khatib al-Shirbini, a great chef, a scholar. I'm a simple guy. I was like, how, how do I do that? Because they're, I want to say because they're dead, but I didn't, thank God I didn't say that. So he said, because when, you're, when you read an author's work, you are in their company. Right? You're in their company and one should have that kind of respect and reverence. But likewise, when you read the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, don't read it as some kind of, oh, it's interesting. The Prophet Wasallam said that. It's like, have the sense that you are hearing the words of the Prophet ﷺ himself, right? When you he hear du'as, you, know, you read du'as, these are wor you are hearing words said by the Prophet ﷺ. And the hadiths, we have, con we have either near certitude or, you know, we are sh or surety in the sound hadith that this is what the Prophet ﷺ actually said. And that's something amazing. And we should be amazed. An established hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and reliable works of hadith that we are sure that the Prophet ﷺ said this. So, you know, with Ramadan coming up, this is one of the things to gear up for is how we make that connection with the Prophet ﷺ. And this is why we celebrate. Um, alhamdulillah. Sorry, I just wanted to... If I can, o'alik ala ba'd al kalimatik, inshallah. The, uh, this is an amazing blessing that we have that our debates amongst scholars and is which word the Prophet may have said. I don't know if you know about Christianity. In Christianity, they're trying to say, well, what language? That's their debate. They don't even know what language Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam spoke. Did he actually say these words? And what language? They're not even into, so. Their debates of an entirely different. We actually know the words, we know we know the language, you know. And it's been established from a lot of um, religious study scholars that, you know, non-Muslims, by the way, that 
there is no world religion or you know that uh, the followers know most about the person who established a religion than Muslims. But the amount of information, the amount of knowledge, the amount of detail that we know about our Prophet Wasallam, no other faith has that. No other faith has that. And it's just amazing that, and it, and it goes in line, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed going to say that, you know, the Rasulullah, this, he is your uswa, you have to follow him. Well then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to establish the means to follow him as well, and he's definitely done that. It makes perfectly logical sense, and the mean is there. We just have to use that mean. But other religions don't even have that. We know exactly how the Prophet ﷺ prayed. We know the different ways he prayed. No other deen has that. If you ask them how did, how did Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam fast, how did Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam fast? No. They just know he fasted. In the Bible it says, oh, he, we, we, you know, he did put his, he prostrated his head on the ground. We do, but how was his prostration? What, what fingers? We have that information. We know whether he put his nose on the ground or not, our prophet, or whether the forehead, we know which limbs. They don't know how to pray. That's why when you see them pray, sometimes you're supposed to get in a circle. Sometimes you hold your, you know, supposed to hold our hands together. How are we supposed to say, you know, how are we supposed to pray? We don't know. Right? And, uh, you know, and this is, in other religions, this is how, this is their state. And this is why you see them now, right? In their churches and all that, they start to bring guitars, they start to bring drums. Uh, that's what happens when you don't have any standard. You don't know how a person, how the person, you know, and for them, Jesus said pray, but then you don't know how. Then you're just going to have to make it up, right? He's going to have to kind of say, well, I'm just going to pray the way I think I should know. But it's not the case for us, alhamdulillah. We know exactly how the Prophet ﷺ prayed. We know how he ate. We know how he slept. We know how he sat. I mean, it's just amazing when you see this, right? And you look at the amount of details. And uh, Alama Iqbal, who had a very beautiful thing when he said about the debates of the fuqaha, he's like, the debates of the fuqaha, whether something's wajib sunnah or bid'ah or not, this is the debate that their debates were stemming out of, this is our, inshallah, understanding of stem, stemming out of the love of the Prophet because they wanted to get it exactly right. Where was this motivation to get it exactly right stemming from stemming from the love that they had of the Prophet Sallallahu right? Yes, they were individuals and later on that came from them, you know, that were starting to debate and just to, you know, prove the other person wrong. But we're not talking about those individuals. We're talking about, you know, our our aim that we follow. And um, that's their that their debates and their love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi like induced them and, and encouraged them to seek out to the best of their abilities just how exactly did the Prophet ﷺ do this? And I recall there's some of the ulama in the past that they said they wouldn't eat a certain food, I think watermelon or chicken, because they had the hadith, but they didn't have the kafiyah. They didn't have what mode did the Prophet ﷺ eat this particular food. And they were waiting for that. They'll say, I'm still looking if there's a hadith or not. And for that reason, they just refrain from a certain food. I forget the details about that and on that. But I think that's another important point to stress and to be thankful for. And hence also, what's the best way of being thankful for this big nema? Study. Study the life of the Prophet That's the best way to throw shukr of all, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great blessing. Sorry, I just wanted to say that. Ali Zaman. Jazakum wa ta'ala khairan. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.